Today we're going to learn about the cross ratio. We have a cross ratio when we have four points on one line, such as here, A, B, C, and D lie on a straight line, and we call the cross ratio the following ratio. A, D divided by D, C times C, B divided by B, A. And we denote it like this. So we have this equality here. And if we denote this distance by x, this distance by y, and this distance by z, then the cross ratio is also given here. It is x plus y plus z divided by z times y divided by x. The main reason the cross ratio is so important and useful is the ability for us to choose a random point in the plane and project this cross ratio on other lines with respect to this point. And then the cross ratio wouldn't change after the projection. Here I'll show you what I mean. Suppose this is just a random point and this here is a random line. Then, connecting this random point with A, B, C, and D, we get this, these four purple lines. And they intersect this black line at the points A', prime, B', prime, C', prime, and D'. Prime. Then, the cross ratio AD divided by DC times CB divided by BA would be the same as the cross ratio A' prime, D' prime divided by D' prime, C' prime, times C' prime, B' prime divided by B' prime, A'. Prime. And this would also be true if the black line appears right here, in which case we have A1D1 divided by D1C1 times C1B1 divided by B1A1 equals the same value as the cross ratio of ABCD. So no matter where we choose the line, the line could be like this, then the cross ratio would be preserved, it could be like this, the cross ratio would be preserved, it could be on the other side here, maybe something looking like that, then the cross ratio would also be preserved. So the cross ratio of these four points would be the same as the cross ratio of these four points, and the cross ratio of these four points, and the cross ratio of these four points. Now let's prove this statement. I'm going to denote the three angles here, alpha, beta, and gamma, and I'm going to denote the lengths from this point to A, B, C, and D by M, N, P, and Q. Applying the law of sines for this triangle and this triangle, we get that x plus y plus z divided by z equals sine of alpha plus beta plus gamma divided by gamma times m divided by p, which is given here. And applying the law of sines for this triangle and this triangle, we get that y divided by x equals sine of beta divided by sine of alpha times p divided by m, which is given here. And now let's multiply these two equalities. On the left hand side, we get x plus y plus z divided by z times y divided by x which is the same thing as the cross ratio of A, B, C, and D. And on the right hand side, we get this ratio of the sines times this ratio of the sines times M cancels out here and P cancels out here. So that's it. And so we get this expression here, the cross ratio equals sine of alpha plus beta plus gamma divided by sine of gamma times sine of beta divided by sine of alpha. And you see now that the cross ratio of A, B, C, and D doesn't depend on the position of this black line in the plane. For example, if it was drawn here, then the cross ratio of the points A1, B1, C1, and D1, which would equal x1 plus y1 plus z1 divided by z1 times y1 divided by x1, would also equal sine of alpha plus beta plus gamma divided by sine of gamma times sine of beta divided by sine of alpha, which as you can see here is the same as the cross ratio of the points A, B, C, and D. And therefore the cross ratio doesn't change after a projection onto another line, with respect to a point in the plane. Interestingly, we can define the cross ratio of four points not only when they lie on a straight line, but also when they lie on the same circle. Suppose that we have A', prime, B', prime, C', prime, and D', prime, which are points on this circle. Then we can define the cross ratio of A', prime, B', prime, C', prime, and D', prime as usual. A', prime, D', prime divided by D', prime, C', prime times C', prime, B', prime divided by D', prime, A'. Prime. So we get this equality here. And now we can apply the law of sines for each of the four segments here. And we know that a prime d prime equals 2 times r times the sine of this angle alpha plus beta plus gamma. Similarly, c prime b prime equals 2 times r sine of beta, d prime c prime equals 2r sine of gamma, and b prime a prime equals 2r sine of alpha. When we cancel out the two r's everywhere, we get that this ratio equals sine of alpha plus beta plus gamma divided by sine of gamma times sine of beta divided by sine of alpha, which we know is exactly the same as the cross ratio of the points A, B, C, and D that lie on a straight line. And so we get this series of equalities, which proves that the cross ratio of the points A, B, C, and D lying on a straight line can be projected onto a circle 
and it will equal the cross ratio of the corresponding points a prime b prime c prime and d prime on that circle. The only condition is that the point through which we are projecting also lies on that circle. Otherwise, this series of equalities wouldn't hold. Here is yet another way in which we can project cross ratios. If we have the points a, b, c, and d that lie on the same circle, and we choose the point x somewhere in the plane, we can draw the lines connecting x with the points a, b, c, and d, and then intersect the circle for the second time at the points a prime, b prime, c prime, and d prime respectively. Then the cross ratio of a, b, c, and d would equal the cross ratio of a prime, b prime, c prime, and d prime, no matter where we chose the point x. To prove this statement, we're going to need to show that the cross ratio of a, b, c, and d, which is a, d divided by d, c times c, b divided by b, a, equals the cross ratio of a prime b prime c prime d prime, which is a prime d prime divided by d prime c prime times c prime b prime divided by b prime a prime. By rearranging the terms in this equality, we get this equality which we need to prove. To prove this statement, we're going to use some similar triangles. I've listed four pairs of similar triangles right here. The first one is triangle x a d, which is similar to triangle x d prime a prime. Since we have a cyclic quadrilateral here, a d d prime a prime, and so this angle must equal this angle, which means that triangles x a prime d prime and x d a have the same angles, meaning that they're similar. In the same way, we can show that triangle x c b is similar to triangle x b prime c prime. After all, quadrilateral b b prime c prime c is cyclic, and so this angle equals this angle, meaning that the two triangles have the same angles. Also, triangle x d c is similar to triangle x c prime d prime. Because you see we have a cyclic quadrilateral here, c c prime d d prime is cyclic. And so this angle here equals this angle here because they both correspond to the arc c d prime in the circle. This means that the triangles x d c and x c prime d prime have the same angles, meaning that they are similar. And we can apply the same logic for triangles x b a and x a prime b prime. They're similar because this angle equals this angle, and these angles are equal from the cyclic quadrilateral b b prime a a prime. Both angles correspond to this arc here of the circle. So the two triangles x b a and x a prime b prime have the same angles, meaning that they're similar. From the first pair of similar triangles, we get that a d divided by a prime d prime equals the ratio x a divided by x d prime. So a d divided by a prime b prime, which are corresponding sides in the two triangles, equals x a divided by the corresponding side of x a in the other triangle, which is x d prime. So we have this equality here. Similarly, from the second pair of similar triangles, we get that c b divided by c prime b prime equals x c divided by x b prime. From the third pair, we get that d c divided by d prime c prime equals x c divided by x d prime. And from the fourth pair, we get that b a divided by b prime a prime equals x a divided by x d prime. Now that we have these four equalities, we can use them to derive this equality here. By multiplying these two equalities, we get this equality here. And by multiplying these two equalities, we get this equality here. But notice that this right hand side and this right hand side are exactly the same. And therefore, the left hand side here equals the left hand side here. But this is exactly the same as claiming that this equality holds, which means that this equality holds, which means that the cross ratio of a, b, c, d equals the cross ratio of a prime, b prime, c prime, d prime. Here's the optional problem. We have a circle, and c, d is the diameter of that circle, so the center of the circle is the midpoint of the segment c, d. The point p is chosen on the segment c, d at random, and then an angle alpha is chosen. Points b and a lie on this side of the circle and are such that angles BPD and APC are equal to alpha. Then we intersect the lines BA and DC at the point X. We need to prove that the point X stays constant when we vary the angle alpha. So if we've chosen the angle alpha to be smaller, B would come here, A would come here, but then BA would intersect CD at that same point X, and that is what we need to prove. And here's the solution. First, I'm going to continue the line AP such that it intersects the circle at the point B prime. Then, since this angle is alpha, we know that this angle is also alpha. And now, because this angle is alpha and this angle is alpha, 
in the circle is symmetric with respect to the line CD, symmetric to itself, I mean, and the line PB is symmetric to the line PB prime, also with respect to the line CD, then the points B and B prime must be symmetric with respect to the line CD. This means that triangles CDB and CDB prime are congruent, and therefore the length of BD equals the length of B prime D, and the length of BC equals the length of B prime C. From this it follows that the ratio db divided by bc times cb prime divided by b prime d equals 1, because bd equals b prime d and cb prime equals bc. But this ratio is exactly the cross ratio of the points d, b prime, c and b on this circle, d, b prime, c and b. And this cross ratio, when projected through point A onto the line cd, turns into the cross ratio dpcx, because you see the point d stays where it is, the point b prime gets projected to the point p, the point c stays where it is, and the point b gets projected to the point x. Therefore, this cross ratio dpcx equals 1. So the cross ratio dpcx equals dx divided by xc times cp divided by pd. But we know that the ratio cp divided by pd doesn't depend on the angle alpha, and therefore it is constant, meaning that dx divided by xc, which is 1 divided by this constant ratio, is also a constant value that doesn't depend on the angle alpha. We know that dx equals dc plus xc, and so we can write this equality like that. And then this equals dc divided by xc plus 1, and so dc divided by xc must also be constant. But dc, this is the diameter of the circle, which is constant, it doesn't depend on the value of alpha, and therefore xc is constant. So this length here is constant, meaning that the point x is constant, or fixed, so it doesn't depend on the angle alpha.